How are you today? Thank you for joining me again. Let's start with a prayer. Dear Lord, we pause for a moment before we open your words. We know that the spiritual things are spiritually discerned. It's only when your spirit guides us that we can fully comprehend the message you have for today. So help us to be attentive to what you will impart to us for today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our study for today is entitled God's Amazing Grace. And uh, we stopped or we ended last time with uh, Abraham uh, saying that uh, Sarah was his sister. Yes, it's true, but it's half truth. And it makes it what we call a white lie. And the Lord is not pleased whenever we don't say the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So, as we continue on with the story, uh, we will talk about how God handles situations like this in His amazing grace. So let's read. Then God said to him in the dream, Yes, I know that you have done this in the integrity of your heart. And it was I who kept you from sinning against me. So when the Lord revealed to Abimelech uh, that uh, the woman you took uh, from Abraham is a married woman, and he said to the Lord, Lord, will you judge me because what I've done, uh, I am innocent. They told me they are sisters and brothers. So the Lord said, I know your heart. You have the integrity. And so I stopped you from doing things that are not right. I kept you from sinning against me. Let's continue reading. Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for you, and you shall live, and if you restore her not. And the Abimelech took sheep, oxen, and men servants, and women servants, and gave them to Abraham, and restored him Sarah his wife. So upon knowing that uh, Sarah was the wife of Abraham, God instructed him to, re to return uh, Sarah to her husband and not only returning Abimelech uh, lavished him with gifts such as sheep, oxen, men servant, women servant and uh, this were sort of a peace offering and uh, he accepted the explanation of Abraham that indeed they were sisters but the half truth is that they were also married as husband and wife. And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before you. Dwell where it pleases you. What a generous Abimelech. He was indeed a God-fearing person. Uh, opposed to what uh, Abraham thought he was in the nation as not people of the Lord. It's not safe for us to make judgment when we don't know the full situation. And uh, so he was even offered, my land before you, you can dwell where you want. And to Sarah he said, behold, I have given your brother a thousand pieces of silver. Behold, he is to you a covering of the ice. So... It's not just oxen, sheep, servants, but he gave Abraham a thousand pieces of silver. That's huge. And uh, if, if we look at it, Abraham and Sarah should be punished. Why? Because they did not learn their lesson. They failed to trust the Lord. For the second time. But uh, 
the Lord looked at the heart of Abraham and Sarah. They were sincere in their obedience to the Lord, only that their faith has not matured yet. So, he overlooked their mistakes. He overlooked their mistrust. Instead of cursing them, the Lord even granted them more than what they deserve. Livestock, not that they need, because they got lots, but the Lord is just showing that because your heart is leaning towards me, there are occasions when I will just close my eyes as if I did not see your sin. As long as you acknowledge it, as long as you learn from it, instead of cursing you because of your sin, I will bless you. That's what amazing grace is all about. But it's not an excuse for us. Oh, I want to be blessed like Abraham and Sarah. So I can lie. I can do things against the will of the Lord. No, that's not the point. The point is our sins will have consequences. But God in His goodness will not throw in our face the consequence or the penalty of our sins, but because of His goodness and His grace, He would even grant us what we don't deserve. This is the God of Abraham and Sarah. This is the God you and I serve. This is the God who promises us that He is a gracious, merciful God. And he is open to accept us even after we have committed mistakes and sins against him. And you look back into your life experience. Is it true that uh, after all the sins that we have done against him, he has not punished us based on what we have done? I myself, I will admit to you that without you knowing my heart and my thoughts, it's only God who knows my iniquity, my wickedness. But thank God, He does not visit my iniquity and count it against me so that He gives me judgment and punishment for all the bad deeds I did, or bad deeds that I have done. But He grants me opportunity to learn. He grants me... Uh, circumstances where I will realize my sin and He leads me towards understanding how to overcome. So, He is not just like that, gracious to Abraham and Sarah. He is also gracious to you, my dear friends. So, let's thank Him. Let's praise Him. Let's always remember, if we have done sin against Him, don't be afraid to come back when we have fallen just raise your hand and said Lord save me and his hand will be there to lift us up and give us another chance we fail the second chance God will still give us more opportunities it's not for him it's for us so let's celebrate let's express our gratitude to him because He is such a marvelous, amazing, gracious God that He is so willing to forgive us and to even grant us blessings instead of curse because of our sins. And so what is He saying? He said, So Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his main servants, and they bare children. For the Lord had fast closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah's Abraham's wife. So this is the message of the Lord for you and me. If you follow my instructions, instead of curse, I will grant you the blessings you don't deserve. Let's thank Him through prayer. Lord, You are indeed an amazing and gracious, loving God to us. Help us not to abuse Your grace. But help us 
to appreciate and to grab the opportunity of learning from our mistakes so that we won't repeat them again and again, but we grow in the knowledge of you and our love for you so that we can walk with you in a straighter way and trust you more each day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.